after the first debate this year, I wrote that I thought Romney had won it pretty clearly. Last night, I thought things were quite different. I thought the tables were almost turned. Obama was strong in very much the way Romney was in the first debate. What I'm looking at is what I call temperament. And what that means is the strength of character and firmness and flexibility and sharpness and quickness on the feet that are the kind of qualities you need to do really the toughest, most challenging, most difficult job on earth. I thought. Obama showed a lot more of those qualities than Romney last night. I think at the beginning, Obama got Romney off balance when he talked about the Detroit auto bailout. He was strong on that. Romney was weak. He said, well, Obama wanted a kind of bankruptcy too. And that didn't, that didn't really carry. And Obama, it's a topic that's a lot easier for Obama, I think. But Obama went from there to the first real zinger line of any of the debates. And Governor Romney says he's got a five-point plan. Governor Romney doesn't have a five-point plan. He has a one-point plan. And that plan is to make sure that folks at the top play by a different set of rules. That's been his philosophy in the private sector. That's been his philosophy as governor. That's been his philosophy as a presidential candidate. I thought that was pretty effective. And after that point, Romney tended to look a little pained and off balance. After about a half an hour, you see Romney answering questions well, he's, he's pretty sturdy, he's got his talking points, he's going through what he has to say, but he's saying it uncomfortably. And you see Obama looking relaxed, confident. He's got a kind of a smile. It's not the Biden smile that looks dismissive. It's a, it's a, it's a strong, respectful smile, but you look at Romney and Romney's looking uncomfortable. He's starting to grimace and wince a little bit. The fact that he only has to pay 14% on his taxes when a lot of you are paying much higher. When we're talking about math that doesn't add up, how about $4 trillion of deficits over the last four years? $5 trillion. That's math that doesn't add up. We have, we, we have a president talking about someone's plan in a way that's completely foreign to what my real plan is. Now, Romney definitely had strong moments. For instance, I think perhaps his strongest moment was when he said Obama came into office planning this and this and this and this and this and all those things he didn't deliver on. That could have been very effective. But Romney said it at that point in such a sort of defensive way that it sounded more like he was reciting rehearsed lines than really saying what he passionately believed. The, the passion wasn't really there. There was a kind of, of, of truculence instead. And then came the Benghazi moment. You said in the Rose Garden, the day after the attack, it was an act of terror. It was not a Please spontaneous proceed. demonstration. Is that what you're saying? Please proceed, Governor. I, I, I want to make sure we get that for the record, because it took the president 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transcript. It, 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 he did, in, in fact, sir. So let me, let me call it an act of Can terror. Can you say that a little Garden. louder, Candy? <laughs> He did call it an act of terror. I think that hurt Romney not only because it looked like his gotcha moment came back and got him, and it made him look a little foolish that way, but also I think he again looked as if he was politicizing this national tragedy and this, this very serious international event in a, in a way that hurt him right after the event happened. He sort of came back and hurt himself again in kind of the same way. By the time we got to the final question for the two candidates, what is it that voters most misunderstand about you? It turned out there weren't closing remarks. Remarks That was the closing remark. Romney, by that point, his answer began sort of defensive. He said, I misunderstood, be basically he said, I misunderstood because the Obama has had all these mean advertisements about me. In the nature of a campaign, uh, it seems that some campaigns are focused on attacking a person rather than prescribing their own future and the things they'd like to do. In the course of that, I think the president's campaign has tried to characterize me as, uh, as someone who, who's very different than who I am. I care about 100% of the American people. It just sounded defensive and weak and petulant and complaining and al almost whiny. I actually sat there thinking, what is Obama going to say? I would think he'd say, by now I'm pretty well understood. But he had a very sharp answer. I think a lot uh, of this campaign, 
maybe over the last four years has been devoted to this notion that I think government creates jobs, that that somehow is the answer. That's not what I believe. I believe that the free enterprise system is the greatest engine of prosperity the world's ever known. I believe Governor Romney is a good man, loves his family, cares about his faith. But I also believe that when he said behind closed doors that 47 percent of the country considered themselves victims who refused personal responsibility, think about who he was talking about. Folks on Social Security who've worked all their lives, veterans who've sacrificed for this country, students who are out there trying to hopefully advance their own dreams, but also this country's dreams, soldiers who are overseas fighting for us right now, people who are working hard every day, paying payroll tax, gas taxes, but don't make enough income. And I want to fight for them. He managed to throw in the, the Eat Night's very first um, reference to Romney's notorious 47% line. So altogether, in terms of showing presidential temperament, I think in one debate we saw one candidate show it, in the other we saw the other candidate show it. The first debate clearly had a big effect on the campaign and on the polls. Who knows whether the second debate will or can have such an effect. Um, and we have the third debate yet to come.